In this video, we're going to look at how to create and use an extension in Tecla PowerFab. Then also show using the Tecla PowerFab API from that extension to make changes in PowerFab. The API commands that we'll be showing are save nest and TFS cut. In order to use extensions, we first need to enable extensions. To do so, go to the file menu, administration, and then from the administration drop down, select settings and check enable extension directory. Once created, your extension will be placed in this extension directory that now shows as one of your default directories. So here's the basic structure of an extension. You set up your class to inherit from iExtension and from iNestRequest. Set the display name to what you want to see in Tecla PowerFab. Generate a new GUID for the ID and implement Set Extension Manager and Send Nest Request. Here you can see that our Send Nest Request shows a new form, External Nesting Workflow Demo Form. Once you build your project, place the new DLL file into the extension directory. We can see the extension in action by creating a combining run. We'll create one in a production control job. Let's go to production control, combine, and choose nest. Then we'll filter for parts to nest. And then open optimizations, set plate nesting software to other, and save. Now click nest. When you see the combining run, notice that all the plates are not combined. This is because Tecla PowerFab is not the nesting software. We'll be calling a different nesting software. When we look at combining run, export parts for nesting, we see our extension in that menu. Here it's called external nesting demo. Let's select that to export our nesting request. The nesting request is an XML file that gets sent to the extension. We can see that now our extension is running. Here you can see the nest request that we sent. We see that the source application is Tecla EPM, the version, and the creation date and the time. Our work order parts are listed. You can see here that the piece marks and quantity match the combining run that we set up in PowerFab. After that is the CNC data for each piece mark. And then the file concludes with a list of available inventory for this combining run. Your software would then take these parts and the available inventory and build a nest. Once you're ready to send the nest to Tecla PowerFab, then you call Save Nest. We'll send a fake nest for now by clicking Save Nest to Tecla PowerFab. Now let's look at what this has done. Here's the code to build the save nest command. 
we start with a FabSuite XML request and then add a save nest command. We then add to it each nest that we create. So typically it would be a different nest for each thickness and grade of plate. Each nest gets an inventory plate used for that nest from the available inventory in the nest. And then each nest gets a list of parts that are nested onto that plate. Tecla PowerFab doesn't track the position of each plate when it's externally nested. It trusts the nesting software to do that. Each nest also optionally gets a remnant with a picture. Tecla PowerFab will accept multiple remnants per nest in case you wish to send more than one. And the nest itself also gets a picture. The pictures are base64 encoded PNG images. The image file names tell PowerFab what name the picture should have when we create the PNG file in our document index. We send a command through the API with execute API request and check the result for errors. In Tecla PowerFab, you can see the results in several places. First is the API log, and that's useful for debugging. Save nest command is logged when it's sent with the API log parameters set to all. And this is the log that results. On the API request tab, we can see the XML that the extension sent just now. And from the API response tab, we see the result. Notice that the total successful and total unsuccessful variables will be important to you as you implement this. On the response tab, we can also see the remnant ID that Tecla PowerFab assigned to the remnant created. It may be useful for your software to keep track of this. In the program, we can see that this part in the production control job is now linked. We can click the links button and see that it's in inventory and click open to see the item nested. Double clicking the line will show the nest image, the remnant and the parts nested. You can tell here that the nest image we have isn't real because we didn't actually create this nest. You will be sending an image of the actual nest that you did create. The remnant is shown with the remnant ID that matches the XML response and a picture of each part is shown on subsequent tabs. Now this nest is reserved to an inventory item and can be treated like any other combining run in Tecla PowerFab. Most obviously it can be cut or taken from stock. We'll do that now as the final demonstration of our demo program. Here we have the option to enter piece tracking hours that can be tracked against the cutting station on this route when the nest is taken from stock. When we perform the take from stock, we'll see this inventory item be consumed and the remnant appear in its place. Now this inventory item has been used and cut into our nest. Here we have the remnant. And here's one of the parts from the nest. You can see that now on the, on the bottom right, it says that it has been taken from stock. We can open production status to see that this part has now been processed and has a green TFS status. And finally, the TFS cut command also shows up in the API log. To allow you to see what was sent and the results returned. So this is the way that an external nesting software receives a nest request originating from a Tecla PowerFab user and returns the results to Tecla PowerFab. Calling save nest returns your nest to Tecla PowerFab where it is then reserved to inventory if the inventory item is available and if not it creates a requisition which is documented more fully elsewhere. When your nest is returned to PowerFab, the nest ID that you used is cataloged in PowerFab and can later be used to modify that nest or to take that nest from stock. TFS cut is a second command demonstrated and has lots of options. We used the option to pass in the nest ID, which cut all the parts on that nest, 
marked them cut in the production control job, removed the consumed inventory plate from inventory, and added the remnant back to inventory. This program and the XSD schema for the Techo Power Fab Open API are available for you to download. And we at Techo Power Fab are also available to answer questions that you may have as you develop the interface from your machine to Techo Power Fab.